Ah, travellers, welcome to my humble abode. Where are my manners? Please, take a seat and relax, and allow me to guide you through the magical and ever-growing world of Dungeons and Dragons. In this series, I will delve into the darkest depths, seeking out hidden lore and untold truths, exploring treacherous lands for long-lost treasure, and getting gritty with foul monstrosities. But before I begin such endeavours, first we need to know about the world of Dungeons and Dragons, and where did it begin? From the first edition, made almost 50 years ago, to the current 5th edition, much has changed, with many worlds created, destroyed, or lost, as told in the source books and by you, the players, as homebrew. For this series, we will be exploring the Forgotten Realm settings, based on the planet of Toril, of which the 5th edition is centred around. The Forgotten Realm is enriched with deep history and lore, and many stories have been told in forms such as those as video games like Neverwinter Nights and Baldur's Gate, to board games and an MMO known as Neverwinter Online. And let us not forget the hundreds of books that have been written. On today's endeavour, I want to take a broad look at the planet of Toril, starting with its similarities to that of the planet Earth. The reason for that is because the Forgotten Realms is in fact a parallel universe. Starting what would be considered Europe on Earth, this is the continent of Faerun the westernmost portion of Toral's central supercontinent, a diverse landscape inhabited by numerous races and cultures, including those of humans, dwarfs, elves, halflings and gnomes. It is this continent that holds all those key names in all those stories. To the north you have the Icewind Dales, an arctic tundra. To the west you have the Sword Coast, a bustling coastline filled with trade, pirates and adventure. To the south leads to such places like the Great Rift, an ancestral home to gold dwarfs. And to the east, Molorand, once a mighty empire, now only a shadow of its former self. The most well-known location in Faerun is the Sword Coast, a vast land riddled with adventure and danger. It is this land you'd find Baldur's Gate, and Waterdeep and Neverwinter. But don't think for one second that this is a small location. In length, it is more than 1500 miles wide, which is equivalent to at least 62 days of travel in a straight line in normal terrain and it's almost 2,000 miles in length which is equivalent to 83 days of unpeded travel. With such a large canvas it is no wonder why so many stories and adventures are told here and in future endeavours of ours I shall go more in depth into its many locations and history. To the east of the central continent lies Carantur. It's steeped in ancient history and has the largest landmass in all of Toril. The populace and culture is similar to the one in the eastern population of Earth. Carantur is broken down into many different countries, riddled with war and unrest. These kingdoms are considered the most powerful nations across the planet, and if they so desired, they could sweep across all of Toro and completely dominate it. Between Carantur and Faerun stretches the Horde Lands, known as the Endless Wastes, which span for hundreds of miles, and the Golden Way, one of the very few safe paths to travel, crosses these lands. To the southeast lies the continent of Us. Little is known about this continent other than it's populated by spiritualists and druids. The spirit world and nature dominate the lives of its inhabitants, and the populace are known as Uslanders. Uslanders are believed to have an ancient culture similar to that of the Aboriginal tribes of Australia in the past. This continent, for the most part, is left unexplored, and no one truly knows what may lay dormant. To the south of the central continent, what would we know as Africa? lies the continent of Zakora, a mostly hot, arid continent dominated by elemental forces that believe in the philosophy of fate and honour. Zakora can be also known as the land of fate. It is home to a diversity of non-human inhabitants, but the majority comprises of humans known as the Zakarans. The seas around this continent are always plagued with pirates who hunt down merchant ships wishing to pass, forcing them to pay exorbitant fees. This land is full of secret cities and huge deserts, and whispers in the wind tell tales of genies who rule from the shadows. Angkor Ome, a continent far to the northwest, is shrouded in deep mystery and danger. Rumours and myths tell stories of unimaginable wealth, enough to change one's life forever. The land itself is dissected into many small islands, and is often referred to as the Angkor Ome Archipelago. The islands that break off further north are large sheets of ice, and on the mainland, a sea of thick jungle. It has been said that within these lands lie wild elves that transcend beauty, and dragons that have grown old and wise. 
These lands are for those who seek to be legends and myths in the centuries to come. Directly south of Angoroime lies the outstretched hand of Mastika, a jungle-like land with primitive cultures. Bound by duty to their gods, they give blood sacrifices in return of power. This land is inhabited mostly by humans, which can be further broken down into four distinct groups. Hidden within these lands, you may even come across wild halflings and desert dwarfs. Mastika was originally the name of a goddess of earth and life, and that she created these lands and creatures of Toreo. As such, those who do reside here refer to this land as the true world. One of the most unknown lands of all of Toro is Katashaka, a place that has hardly been touched and is for the most part unexplored. All we know is that it is the birthplace of a few original human tribes as well as the Tabaxi. These lands are one of the oldest in all of Toro's history, and yet it is the continent that we know least about. What great ancient treasure remains here? Or maybe an ancient evil? The last of the core continents is also the smallest, the island of Evermeet, a land said to be so full of magic that it is surrounded by a permanent illusion, and that the very island itself was created using high elven magic. Very few non-elves have ever been permitted to visit this island, and it's considered the last true elven kingdom in Toreo that exists outside of the Fae. Outsiders have come to know this island as the Green Isle. Coral also shares the same calendar like that of Earth, with the same number of hours in a day and days to a year. And like Earth, it's also the third planet from the Sun. Toro also has one moon called Saloon. However, it's unique in the sense that it has its own asteroid cluster that chases after it, known as the Tears of Saloon. This was but a brief overview of the world of Toro, showing the many similarities between itself and Earth, both from the locations on the map, the climates of the different regions, and those that inhabit them. But that does bring me to my next subject, the races of Toro. As we can expect, some races will thrive more in one location than others. Races like humans can be found scattered all across Toro, whilst those with more exotic bloodlines like tieflings than the Kenku are of much rarer breed. We know from the 5th edition source material that there are many races that we can choose to play as, all with their own unique origins and stories. But I believe there is a larger question to ask here. Where did all these races originate from? What race is actually considered the eldest? Was there once a race that thrived and reached further than humans? We covered how Evermeet is the last true kingdom of the elves. But what happened to their often spoken counterparts, the dwarfs? How do they become great smiths that they're renowned for today? Have halflings always been as friendly and jolly as they seem to be? Or do they perhaps have a dark side which has remained a secret to those outside their own race? This of course does not even begin to cover the even more powerful monsters that ravage the lands. We know that Krakens control the seas and have incredible power, but how did they become that way? Were they once a wizard's familiar that outgrew the wizard? Or did Theresk, a mammoth of a beast that would not hesitate to mow down an ancient dragon in its path? Yet why is that beast so rare? Those that live in the dark shadows, hidden far from the light of day, were they once creatures that thrived on the surface before driven into the deep, dark depths? In our future endeavours, I shall reach deep into the archives to pull out as much lore and knowledge as possible. And together with you, mighty adventurers, we shall uncover Dungeons and Dragons' deepest, darkest secrets. I have been your guide and your host, and until our next great adventure, raise your flagons high, may you always strike true, and your dice roll 20.